Hello, all you skibbies. Welcome to the uh, Great Answer podcast on kink, sex, and culture, formerly known as the Ropecast. And uh, right now we're on a bi-weekly schedule, basically because I have the interviews that fall through and stuff like that. Um, but I'm very excited because we are going to be next week flying to Los Angeles for the uh, first GRU of 2017 and the sixth ever LA GRU, Los Angeles GRU. Um, and you can find out more about that at la.gru.space online. Um, but one of the cool things about this is this is the first time, finally, that I get to bring along my Serva Naya, um, who was also here on the podcast. And uh, she's wanted to go to the L.A. Groove for a while, um, has never quite been able to make it happen, although she did, like, come in th- from a distance once when I did in a, a class a session on long-distance DS. Uh, she was there virtually. Um, and, uh, oh, I also need to mention that this particular podcast is still sponsored by TwistedMonk.com, maker of fine handcrafted rope. And you get to have your hands on some Twisted Monk rope during your um, the Columbus Grew. Yes. And tell me about what that experience was like when you were working with that. Um, well, I've always been a fan of Twisted Monk's rope, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nice because I, I am a hemp girl. You are a hemp girl, and not, not, in, the, not in the smoking <laughs> way. but Not in the smoking way, but definitely in the rope way. It is my um, preferred go to when I'm being tied up and when I'm tying so um and monks is always so nice and so pretty and what was what was like like how how would you describe the way it feels like somebody never had runk rope in their hands before and you're like so I, I like natural fibers because they mm-hmm. tend to have the bite against itself but the the hemp is soft and it doesn't have the bite against my skin that, say, jute does, which mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with jute, but I, like I said, I'm a hemp girl. <laughs> Some of our best friends are jute, you know, <laughs> really. Um, and it just, it, it flies and it, it handles yeah. really nicely. To be honest, one of the things I like about uh, hemp versus jute is that it um, it is a little heavier, it has a little more weight to it. I mean, when I'm doing speed bondage or really fast mm-hmm. stuff, I do enjoy the fact that jute is light and it flies around, but um, I also really enjoy when they, he used to have a, a brand called four strand Bavarian blonde oh. that was just such a pleasure to have running through my hands. So that is a pleasure um, to be tied in. Yes. As well. uh, Twistedmonk.com is where you can find his stuff. You can also find other neat stuff. Um, I have um, a few different uh, uh, uh Monk sacks and candles. his candles we have. Oh, they're really awesome. Yeah, that that <laughs> that was a, a sound of lust there from Naya. Yeah. Um, and I recently ordered some um, stickers from Twisted Monk. And I ordered them specifically for this podcast. So here's the deal. I want to get more patrons on my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash great answer. And um, what I'm going to do is on uh, the, let's see, let's see, uh, next Friday, at the L.A. Grew, in fact, I'll do it at the L.A. Grew. I will do it live. I will do a drawing from among my patrons. Now, there's a few. There's like, I think, 22 patrons of the Great Answer podcast. Um, So the odds are pretty good. uh, And one of my random patrons will get um, a sticker uh, for the twisted from twisted monk and mailed to you along with you know a nice little erotic letter and things like that that you may ask for but the one thing you will definitely get is a sticker and that's going to come right now it may just come from the patrons that i have because i mean i get any new patrons but if i do you will also get a chance to get a free sticker from twistedmonk.com sponsor of the great answer podcast so that all being said, you can, by the way, you can also find out about more grooves at grew.space. Um, that's a good thing to do. Uh, we will also be teaching at the Pleasure Chest in Los Angeles on Sunday, January 8th, which is very exciting. It's our first time teaching at the Pleasure Chest there. We've taught at the Pleasure Chest in Chicago, Chicago before. But yeah, yes, very we, we're about very this. happy to have that happen. Um, and anything else in January that's going on? 
Uh, you have the IRT training. That's Baltimore. right. In Baltimore, I'll be doing the Consent Incident Response Training. Um, and you can find out more about that at um, on FetLife, actually, is where the main thing is. Um, but you can also, what was it called? It's uh, CIR Baltimore, I believe, is the link. I should really know this off the top of my head. Yeah, CIR Baltimore, CIR Baltimore dot BPT dot me is where you can order tickets. It's a $50 for one day workshop and you will come out of it being able to form your own IRT team for your IRT, your own incident response team for your event or organization. Um, and uh, I'm not saying you have to do that, but it has proven useful for many others. Um, Dark Odyssey, uh, Rope Craft, Ramble Gru, Bound Exposure, and the Academy of Fetish Arts in Columbus have all um, liked the training and used it for their events. So, um, again, the uh, if you are in Baltimore area and you want to sign up for that, that's going to be at the end of January. You can find out more at cirbaltimore.bpt.me. BPT is brown paper tickets. Okay. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, as it happens, Naya also is a presenter, aside from being um, my favorite demo model and other um, fun ways that she and I co-teach, she has her own teaching as well. And um, she specializes in something that's proving to be a very common thing, especially this time of year, for kinksters which is depression and kink. So, um, Naya, do you want to talk about why you thought that a class on kink and depression is a useful thing? Um, I think it started out when I started dealing and accepting the fact that I had depression and fairly severely uh, about two and a half years ago. And um, realizing that the stigma, even in 2016 of depression is still uh, rampant and not enough people are talking about it and not enough people are talking about it in regards to things like negotiation and play. And that it was really important for me to start talking about it um, because I wanted people to not feel alone, but it also helped me to feel less like I was being stigmatized to go talk about it and have people come up to me and be like oh my god I didn't realize that you were going through that too and like you present all over the place and you still function and I'm like yeah but I still have bad days and I still struggle and before I sit down to play I still need to really sit and see where I am emotionally mm-hmm. well the word stigma is um, kind of a loaded word and people mm-hmm. throw it around a lot without necessarily you know, I'm not sure everybody's using the same word. <laughs> well, if I said to you, well, I don't know any stigma. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being depressed. Lots of people are depressed. What do you mean stigma? What, what are you talking about with that situation? Um, a lot of people still like, and, and we make jokes about it all the time. Oh, I'm crazy. Mm. Um, you know, I'm going to flip don't out. stick your dick in crazy. Yeah. It's a fun one. Don't stick your dick in crazy. Um, I'm emotionally unstable. No, I'm emotionally erratic sometimes, and it's out of my control. But the thought is that mental illness is something we can, we should just be able to figure out what's wrong and deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact of it is, is that depression and all other mental illnesses are based in some kind of physical problem in your body, an imbalance of some way, Mm -hmm. Um, serotonin level imbalance, you know, that kind of thing for depression. And it's no different than, say, epilepsy or diabetes in that it's something that we need to learn to control and deal with because it's a chronic illness. It's not a, oh, you're crazy or, oh, she just can't deal with anything. She's too fragile. Ah, yes. Or how about the old drama one? Yeah. she's All she is is drama. Well, a lot of that is, you know, not able to control or having learned a way of control that is outside mm-hmm. the norm. I'm using air quotes there um, from everyone else. So um, does that mean that we should just like 
go out and tell everybody and their brother that we are in therapy or that we're what our medications are and stuff like that? No, I think that everybody has to deal with it on their own level. I think that making sure that you are in a good place personally, if you're the one dealing with it. Um, And I think that if it is something that could be triggered easily or that, you know, PTSD, for example, could have many triggers. My depression can have triggers. Now, PTSD, that's just for vets, right? No, no. (laughs) By the way, in podcast terms, we call that a leading question. (laughs) Um, PTSD is, is something that can happen to anybody who's suffered from any kind of trauma. And, you know, everybody's level of what is trauma to them is going to be different. Mm-hmm. So, um, it you know, anybody can have PTSD. And it could be from anything. Mm-hmm. So, at the same time, uh, and I, I totally agree with you on that. At the same time, the I, I feel like the word trigger gets overused a lot. Um, yeah into, you know, ranging, going beyond PTSD into the anything that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's that's something we have to be careful of um, because when I say the word trigger, I mean triggering an emotional, like, a, a response of fight or flight, mm-hmm. not just a discomfort. Um, and, and you can be uncomfortable with stuff. That's very different than being triggered into an extreme emotional state. Um, and, and that can be fear, that can be rage, that can range in a lot of different ways. So we want to be careful. This is still something that, you know, we're all learning about and we all have to know for ourselves. Um, I have a trigger when it comes to firearms um, in my presence. I'm learning to get over it, but not everybody can. And I've been lucky enough that they're not mm-hmm. around me all the time. Um so we talked a lot about um, depression and stuff already, but we haven't mentioned anything about kink. I mean, how does this how does this relate specifically to people getting their freak on? This has to do with it, like setting up a scene mm-hmm. or going not even a scene, but just say you're going to play in rope or you're going to do some something kinky with your partner. Mm-hmm. I find it really useful. To and I, I'm going to use another one of those lovely buzzwords. The whole mindfulness thing. I'm just going to get out of the way now. <gasps> mindfulness. Oh God. Um, I find it really helpful to sit with myself and kind of do a quick body scan and see not only how I'm feeling physically, but where I'm at mentally. Hmm. Um, so which like, can describe what the process is of a body scan. So I'm just going to sit uh, or lay down. It's kind of whatever's comfortable for you, sitting in a chair, sitting cross-legged on the floor, laying flat on the floor. I don't care if you lay fetal position, whatever's comfortable. And I'm just going to close my eyes and focus on my breath. And then I start at the, you can start at the top or the bottom of your body and just kind of do a mental check. How does my head feel? Are you talking physically or emotionally? Both. Oh, okay. I do both. Um, And at first, it's helpful to maybe just do physical to kind of get used to the process and just say, huh, my head kind of feels dry or itchy. My, you know, and move down. My throat's sore. My, you know, huh, when I take a deep breath, my chest feels tight. When I let it out, there's pain, you know, and just kind of acknowledging those things. They don't have to mean anything. But just kind of making a mental note of, huh, that's what's going on in that part of my body. That helps then when I decide, A, how I'm going to play and what I want to do. If it's going to determine if I'm just going to have a slow, sensual rope scene on the floor. Or if I'm feeling really good and want to try being put up in suspension. Okay. Um, You're a switch. Yes. So how would that affect uh, your decision about topic? I mean... Are there, are there things that you couldn't do? As, like, could you do a suspension with, with somebody? Or let's, I don't think you do suspension. I don't do a suspension. <laughs> um, could you do a rope scene with someone when you were depressed from a top's perspective that you wouldn't do when you were at the bottom? Or does it work both ways? It works both ways. Um, I'm going to make that judgment call pretty much at the time of when I sit and decide how I'm feeling. 
Um, and, you know, if, if the person I'm playing with then says, I don't really feel like doing that, then I'm okay with that being, okay, maybe next time. Because I have to be honest with myself Mm-hmm. In order, because like I tell in my classes, this is supposed to be play. It is supposed to be fun. Yes, it can be serious, but it doesn't have to be. This has to be the only way this scene goes or else. Do you ever say to yourself, oh, man, I'm feeling really depressed. I should go have a scene so I can snap out of it. No, Why I not? don't do that because that is not how I deal with my depression. Um, that is... That puts a burden on someone else that I'm not willing to do um, for my emotional state and for what may happen during the scene. And so if I'm in a really bad depressive state, I may ask you, for example, because you're my partner, to maybe put me in rope in a meditative state and just be in the room with me and leave me on my own. Okay, so it's okay to use it as for therapeutic purposes Therapeutic, but not therapy. therapy. Yeah, that was a replacement for therapy. (laughs) Right, Right. therapeutic, as long as you are being clear with your partner that that's what you're doing. Yes. Okay. And that I I, I don't need anything from you except to put the rope on me and to be there for my safety. Mm -hmm. But um, if something comes up that I need help dealing with later, I will talk to you or my therapist about it. But um, I will not go into any kind of heavy play scene. If I am in one of my depressive cycles. So you brought up your therapist um, and you are fortunate enough to have a therapist that is kink aware. How did you open that conversation with him? Um, You first walked in and you're like. The same way I do with my doctors in that I go in and I am just brutally honest. I'm like, listen, I'm kinky. I'm poly. I'm in a DS relationship. If you are, yes, <laughs> and I will explain it if they have any questions. And I say, I say those three things, and I'm like, look, if you are uncomfortable with any of those, that is perfectly all right. Tell me now, and I will go find somebody who is comfortable with them, because this isn't. I mean, they, my doctors and my therapists need to be aware of these things. It is part of who I am. It is part of my life. If they are uncomfortable with it, I am not going to put them in a position to be uncomfortable with something and me in a position to feel like I have morally failed somehow. So it's just easier on everybody. Okay. And there's the, do you recommend the Kinko World Professionals list that the NCSF has? or? Um, it is, I haven't used it, I'll be honest. I, I think it's a great resource if someone wants to check it out. Um. A lot of people who aren't kink aware aren't aware of the list. Hmm. So, like, my therapist was not aware there was a list. Okay. Um, It is not something that's widely advertised in the professional circles, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Unless you know someone who's kinky or, you know, something up another professional who's dealt with it as well. And so I they they don't tend to sign up for it because they just don't know. So you just do like word of mouth kind of thing or? Um, honestly, I've just gone in to the doctors you that just, I've chosen off a list and okay. been like, okay, look, this is the deal. And if they're not okay with it, then I go back to the list and try again. Have you ever had, um, now that you've seen thousands of therapists you know, <laughs> or maybe either heard of or had people that were like, oh, that's, that's the cause of your depression. I will cure you of this. You know, the. Well, let's call it the Fifty Shades of Grey. Of Grey but, you know, <laughs> I did. We're going to fix you. I did have a therapist once who didn't tell me they would be uncomfortable. I didn't think they'd be aware that they'd be uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And once we got into therapy and started talking about stuff, I think they were trying to blame <laughs> the mm-hmm. the kink or my lifestyle, but they weren't quite sure how it related back, and they weren't quite sure how everything worked. And I think it's fair for the therapist to ask questions. Okay. I think it's important that they do their own research as well. But, like, my therapist was like, are there any books out there? And I made recommendations. Now it's up to him to read them and figure out... What are those recommendations? Uh, Tristan Taramino's Opening Up. For Polly. For Polly. 
And Love in Abundance is another book, and I unfortunately cannot think of the author of that one right now. Was only it? there was something that could tell us what the author was. Yes, of quick. The book was... Google search. Quick, fill the space while I'm typing. <laughs> um, also, I, I have talked to him about Kink and DS. Um, I honestly don't have any book recommendations on that. But uh, he is very open to listening to me talk about it. So <laughs> that's what I do. And um, I have recommended a couple of things. It's Love and Abundance, A Counselor's Advice on Open Relationships by Kathy Labriola. L-A-B-R-I-O-L-A. Um, and, and yeah, so he got both of those books. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there's usually a budget at a therapist's office for reading material. And okay. they can use that budget to get these books. Um, and we talk about a lot of stuff. Now, I'm very lucky. My therapist is very open and mm -hmm. doesn't think my lifestyle has anything to do with my depression. Right. And... You know, I'm not going to say that everybody's going to be that lucky they first shot around. So you're going to miss him when he fixes you, right? Yes, <laughs> when I'm all fixed, because that happens. <laughs> well, isn't that it? So do you subscribe to the I go to a therapist to get over things, or is it a, a, main, a health maintenance situation? For me, it's a health maintenance situation. I mean, I, I go there to learn ways to better or different well, I'm going to say different ways mm -hmm. um, to deal with my brain when my brain decides to lie to me or um, my anxiety spikes okay. so the ways I was using before when I was trying to fix myself didn't work um, because I wasn't admitting to needing help okay. or and I wasn't able to ask for help and I was very much anti-medication. Now, and medication doesn't work for everybody. In my case, it brought my anxiety levels and um, my serotonin levels into a balance where I was then receptive to help. How did it affect your kink play and stuff like that? Um, it had some um, side effects. Uh, I gained about 50 pounds mm -hmm. and my pain tolerance went down. Um, so there was a rough period of adjustment there and I really strongly advise people if that happens to work through it and not just give up on the drugs um, if, if pills are helping then by all means do the work to get through the side effects mm -hmm. um, I can't be I'm, I haven't been able to be suspended since I started um, and there was very definite. I, 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 as the person who suspended, I, I have suspended you a few times. You have been able to be suspended. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been for very long, mm -hmm. it, which is very different than right. what it was be. before. Right. Um, and since being a rope bottom that I was before, I had kind of been part of my identity, mm -hmm. how I saw myself. That was a challenge. To accept that, A, that didn't change out you and I's relationship, mm -hmm. um, and learning to find ways to still get rope, get the kind of play I wanted, mm -hmm. but not have it look the way it did before. Gotcha. Um, and be okay with that. So, um, we have talked a lot about how this kind of change in the medication and stuff like that. Um, possibly, you know, you, you had to make adjustments to your kink and stuff like that. Are there any things that you found that, that you got a, that were positive aspects of this change? Does the thing make it a illness per se as much as a change in the way things happen? Anything you found that, that was a good? Oh, most definitely. Um, I, <laughs> I learned how to communicate again. Um, you and I, um, I don't think it's a secret to anyone who knows us. We're going through kind of a rough patch and my communication skills before had sort of been freak out, <laughs> um, you know, and I was very down on myself and very self-critical and I couldn't do anything right. And, um, 
I, I couldn't, you know, it just, it, it, I would go from zero to 180 miles an hour and crying and hysterical and upset and not able to have a conversation to now I can step back from it and be like, okay, wow, that feels crappy to me. But then I ask myself why. And I can kind of see patterns that I've built up from past relationships and from past abuse and things like that, that I've carried on with me. Um, um, the, I do a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy, the other CBT. <laughs> and it is, uh, it has to do with the neural pathways we create for how we deal with things. And the fact that those neural pathways will always be there, but what I have to do is create new patterns and new pathways and strengthen those. Okay. So the old patterns are never going to go away and I can accidentally slip into them. But what I do is I now take breaths and stop the initial automatic reaction. Right. So that is a better in a lot of ways. Um, I've also been able to focus some better um, and I can ask for help now, which is huge. Um, because I couldn't do that before. And so I was trying to deal with all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we talked a lot about like big lifestyle change type things like therapy and medication mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's the end of the year. It's the holidays. Things suck. People have had to deal with their families. They have to perhaps deal with, uh, seasonal affected disorder. legislation that they don't like or, or a, a government that's coming their way that they're not going to like. And seasonal affective disorder in the meantime. Do you have any, like, like what were your top three tips for, God, I feel like shit, what can I do? Any, any like, immediate things? Um, I would say to stop whatever you're doing immediately, like, if that's happening, and just step out of it and do something nice for yourself. Like, step out? What do you mean, step out of it? Like, if you're working, like, I realize not everybody can just get up and leave work. They probably stand up from the But desk if you stand up from your desk and just change the position, like mm -hmm. walk around the office, step outside for a minute, mm -hmm. um, get on social media and ask people to send you silly like photos, cute animals, something funny, you know, boob yeah, shots, yeah. whatever. There's some in my other hat of love life practice. I can tell you there's a lot of neuroscientific, neuropsychological research that points to the fact that um, the same thing that makes social media addictive and two dots and things like that can actually also improve your dopamine you know, response mm -hmm. so that it can help you get out. So yeah, fine. Okay. Um, if, if you're somewhere where you can do it, you mentioned two dots. Um, there are games that I have on my iPad um, and this goes along also with coloring Mm -hmm. Like stopping and doing something that makes me focus only on one thing. Mm -hmm. um, Two Dots is one of those games. I have a game on my computer where I have to search for the hidden things in a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, coloring. Something that requires just my focus and can get me just to focus on that. And that will help me kind of break the cycle of the ruminating thoughts and okay. the, you know, beating myself up and feeling down and just make me step out of step out of it. And they have kinky coloring books and things like that as well. So that's they do. A, the other yeah. thing I would say and 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 <laughs> is my meditation, which mm -hmm. works for me. It's not going to work for everybody. It might be exercise. It might be going for a run for somebody, which I don't run. It might be going and hitting a heavy bag. Um, you know, you you listen to guided meditations. I mean, you and I do meditation differently, but you yes. listen to guided meditations. Yes. Are there any kink focused guided meditations? Um, not yet. Ah, <laughs> I like something that would be an interesting. It is something that's idea. crossed my mind. I'm I'm sort of playing with the idea of that plus some kinky yoga. Yes, we are talking <laughs> about uh, doing a, a yinalingus uh, yes. uh, yoga thing. I am a big fan of yin yoga only, um, well not only, for a lot of reasons. One being that it slows you down. Mm -hmm. um, and we tend to rush and be really busy and stressed out a lot. And yin yoga requires you to slow down. Um, you, it's the reason you don't like it. 
No, I like doing that. <laughs> I mean, yoga doesn't pretend that it's not boring. Right. Uh, it is. It's, yeah, um, it's very boring. And but I, I just found it very helpful, too. It's also really good for people who maybe um, are not as physically fit as they'd like to be, mm-hmm. who are a little older, like I am getting, and my joints don't always act the way I want them to, um, because it is very slow, and you get into one pose, and you stay there for three to eight minutes. And just breathe into that pose. And it's really great for loosening up the joints and everything like that. And if you enjoy looking at um, shapely, female-bodied people, um, we recommend Boho Beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's really good workouts. And she's actually a really nice person, but she also is really freaking gorgeous. She is. um, If you are intimidated by people that can bend themselves easily into pretzels, though, I don't recommend it because she is uber fit. (laughs) But you like, uh, but I love doing her workouts, right? And we also like Adriana. Um, there's yoga by Adrian, yeah. and the yin yoga I've been doing is yoga by Cassandra, Cassandra and that's K A S S A and D R A, I right. think. So, uh, one thing you're seeing a lot more at events is yoga and things like that mm-hmm. offered um, beforehand as a warm up or a warm up for play, which is yeah. something we try to work craft. So, that's something that we like to see more of. Cool. Well, um, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you for uh, coming in. Where are you going to be uh, teaching? We mentioned to be at the L.A. Grew, and you'll be at the Pleasure Chest in L.A. What other events are you going to? Off the top of my head. Are you, are you teaching debauchery? I am teaching, uh, I believe I'm teaching at debauchery and Synergy. Okay. So Synergy um, Michigan, This summer, yeah. Debauchery in North Carolina? Yes. Um, assuming let North Carolina lets people like us in at that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. And, uh, of course, you'll be at Ropecraft. I'll be at Ropecraft, and you will see me mm-hmm. at a few of the grooves. Yep. Um, definitely Pittsburgh, hopefully Carolina. Mm-hmm. How can people find you online? Uh, I am easily found um, at... Either NiaBound.com. dot com, mm-hmm. um, two, two I's in Naya. Yeah, N A I I A Bound dot com, um, which is a blog post that I'm going to be getting back to doing more of. That I talk about depression a lot and occasionally have guest pos- right. posters in. Um, my business, uh, which will be launching at the beginning of January, is an intention at home dot com. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with uh, decluttering and organization and lifestyle hacks. And um, wasn't it uh, house household hacking? Was it household hacking? Yes. Yeah, household hacking. Um, it's a it's a service a service submissive's dream. I mean, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Naya, pretty much everywhere else at Naya or at Naya Bound mm-hmm. on Twitter and FetLife and. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much again. And uh, I'd like to thank Twisted Monk for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, and some of you are wondering what, how can we not sing Karma Rope? Karma Rope is on hiatus right now. Uh, we will let you know when and if they come back. Um, and uh, that will be uh, uh, another appreciative part of the podcast. And uh, in the meantime, this is Gray Dancer signing off. <laughs> Mmm, that's some good kink, sex, and culture. Damn, that doesn't work as a tail line either, does it? <laughs> I need to have a better tagline. We'll work on it. You can always call me or contact me at greatanswer at gmail.com. You can call me uh, 608-432-5668 or 432-ROPE is the uh, ra, the uh, Great Answer Podcast hotline, and I will even play you on the radio if you want to leave a message or comment. Otherwise, you can still find the website, ropecast.com, greatanswer.com, ropecraft.net consent.rocks grew.space we're all over the place so uh, hope you enjoy the podcast hope to hear from you don't forget we'd love to see you on Patreon and get those extra perks patreon.com forward slash great answer yes please